Welcome back to another edition of Jay Hasek's Facebook Live q and I'm with the man that they call Jay Hasek himself, ready to answer your questions. Coach, coming off a West Coast swing, and we've sat down week after week where we've had a lot of good things to talk about, lots of W's after the Facebook Live sessions, but this week not so much the case. Is it fair to say there's kind of the inverse where there were a lot of things after the California trip that need to be corrected and worked on in the practice gym? You know... I, staff and I sat down a lot after that trip and talked about, you know, what did we feel we did good or did bad or, you know, need to work on. And I thought really overall that it was more about the attitude and the effort walking into the whole thing. I, I just don't think we played with much passion. Um, and that's, that's no slam against the guys per se as a team. It's just that's the way that looked. Um, you know, granted, you know, Northridge, UCLA, and Irvine are all very good teams, and we don't take anything away from them. They earned those Ws. Uh, but we played against some other top teams, and I thought played with a little bit more passion. And, you know, when you, when you find something that makes it important to you, that's when you, you pick up the notches a couple of bits. And I just didn't feel that we had enough uh, incentive internally uh, to be able to go out there and, and win those matches and that's you know good teams are gonna make you pay for that And that's what they did and and we've got to learn from that. So luckily it didn't hurt us much uh, You know more than the ego might be a little bit bruised, but uh, it doesn't hurt us in terms of conference And that's good and you know we can learn from that and I know you're quick to turn the page now looking forward to Charleston, West Virginia nine days off in between matches a little bit unusual Is that something that you can take advantage for of rather and will benefit you guys going forward? Well, I think a little recharge is always good. Uh, you know, we've been going every week straight for, I don't know how many weeks we've been doing it now, for what, 12 weeks or so. But, you know, the, the, the reality is, is when we got back from L.A., I, I gave the guys uh, the rest of the week off for spring break and, and told them to go be college students and go enjoy uh, not playing volleyball for a few days. In fact, I, I kind of made it a rule that I don't want them playing volleyball at all. Whether or not that bites us will remain to be seen, but I'm pretty confident that our guys know how to play the game at a high enough level that I don't think that's going to be the real issue. But they need to just get a recharge, a mental recharge, a physical recharge, just kind of get back into wanting to play volleyball again. And, and this week we came back in on Tuesday and I thought we looked pretty good. And, uh, you know, so we're, I, I, we're rolling into this weekend with some pretty good confidence and some fresh legs. This is year four, if I'm not mistaken, that Charleston has had a men's volleyball team. And from the wins and loss standpoint, they're definitely making strides in the right direction. Watching them on tape, what are some things that you've noticed that's going to present some challenges for you guys this weekend? They're really scrappy, um, which is fun to play because you, you, you have to be... Uh, you have to put the ball down with authority and you, you can't just hope and pray that it's going to go down and like most teams You know if it's not around their their comfort zone or their defensive stance uh, Some teams, you know tend to you know not go after it that hard these guys go after it every single play uh, And that's fun to watch and it's fun to coach and you know I know I know that their AD is their coach right now, but she's obviously well versed She was a volleyball coach for the women's team uh, And so she's done a nice job of, of letting those guys create an identity for themselves you know, one of the one of the things that we always talk about is we want to be scrappy as well, and I, and I think we do a pretty good job of that. We pick up a lot of balls, uh, but they're they're definitely hustlers. Um, you know, the setter will chuck it from all over the gym and in any given direction, and so you can't get too comfortable thinking you know where it's going to go. It's it's going to be, um, you know, uh, he's just he's going to think that he's got something open where he, he maybe thinks the block is going already and throws it in another direction, and that's you know that's that's. It's a little tough at times for your block, but it's also a little tough for your hitters if you're not expecting it. But, you know, those are two things I think that we're focusing on the most, which is just discipline with our eyes and just trusting and the knowing that, you know, we're, we're good enough to put a ball down and to not, uh, and to not just assume that it's going to go down. we got to play to the whistle. You mentioned that scrappy play from the Golden Eagles, and that scrappy play has got them to a position where they're one and a half games out of a top four spot in the EIVA. And... I, knowing you, if your team was one and a half games out of a top four spot, you guys would be real competitive. So is that something that you and the guys are going to be ready for? Without question. Uh, and I think it's always uh, motivation when the top team of your conference comes into your gym. You have an opportunity to knock them down a level and you know you want to show them that you belong as well. And, and Charleston this year is, has done a nice job of picking up a few wins, first time in conference history for them. And uh, you know, I, I think our target on our back is just getting bigger and bigger every year. 
which is a testament to my guys and how hard we're working, but also being in the position this year, being undefeated in conference, you know, we're going to walk in with a giant target on our back because people are going to want to, you know, show that they can hang with us. And so uh, we're just excited to play a team that's, that's going to get after it and, and uh, see where the chips fall. Bottom line is this late March conference matchup down the stretch. Every game is going to get astronomically more important. This is kind of what you live for, though, right? These meaningful volleyball games where it kind of gets exciting. Yeah, if this if this doesn't motivate you, there's there's other things you got to worry about. This is this is why we play. You know, we we, we want to be in the hunt. Uh, if we were kind of a po dunk university team that. Uh, you know, doesn't really win much uh, overall, and we were just, you know, happy that they tied their shoes correctly. It'd be a whole other story. But you know, we're we are a team that wants to be considered one of the best in the country. Uh, haven't quite gotten there yet, but we're on our way, uh, and and we've got to be able to to pick up, uh, you know, some slack here and there so that we don't falter when it counts the most. Do you think that the West Coast trip helped build camaraderie with the team? Always being away from home does. Uh, it, it's just you you don't have the the everyday. Uh, invasion of your social media, you know, your your friends calling, your girlfriend calling you, uh, you know, wanting to go out and hang out. And it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, the guys are just on their own with the guys. And, you know, we did, we did some team bonding stuff. We went out and bowled uh, as a group and, and went out and did a couple of things, uh, you know, on the beach together. And it's just, you know, the guys really like hanging out with each other. And it's just a good time for them to be away from all the, all the stuff around here. On the road trip, is it yeah. fair to say that it's important to kind of keep a balance of getting ready for the volleyball matches slash getting away and doing beach activities or bowling, what have you? Yeah, without question. It's it's a chance for them to just be, you know, friends and just hang out. And, you know, that's, that, that makes a huge difference when it gets down to, you know, to crunch time is, you know, can you trust the guy that's next to you? And, you know, you, you made all this, you spent all this time getting to know somebody uh, and, you know, now all of a sudden there's this new layer of information and friendship and brotherhood and all that stuff that comes along with it. So, yeah, it's, it's always good. It is, it's tough a little bit mentally. You get a little drained when you're on the road all the time, but, you know, we're, we're okay. All right, barring any last-minute questions from the viewers, we'll wrap things up with the weekly X's and O's questions. Talk about good communication, kind of a life skill if you think about it, having good communication with one another. But you've talked about in the passing game, that's something that needs to happen with the passers, good communication. Could you elaborate on that and describe kind of what good communication looks like and sounds like? So the majority of teams will pass with three passers, uh, the two outside hitters and the libero. Uh, and what that creates is... Uh, passing lanes. There's five passing lanes. Uh, I'm sorry, four passing lanes. There's the outside lane, there's one in the middle of the, the two, another one in the middle of the two, and another one on the outside. So obviously the ones on the outsides are the, the responsibility of the passers that are on the outside edges. But the two passing lanes in the middle and between, uh, that's where some communication has to start happening. And so most teams kind of have a responsibility chart. You know, if it comes from a certain direction, it has a certain amount of tail, they want a player to be more responsible than the next to be able to take that. Um, um, and then a lot of it is also personnel driven. If you have a libero, let's say, who is really good at going both sides, you maybe let them take both seams. Uh, and so, um, you know, the communication just has to be built over time. It's not something that immediately changes uh, it, it randomly at any given moment. It's more about being comfortable and knowing the guys next to you and who's going to take what responsibility. It's also about knowing your server. Uh, and, and seeing what they're bringing, and it all depends if they're jump serving or jump floating. And so there's there's a lot of different layers, but communication in any aspect of volleyball is going to be huge. You know, the the one thing that we talk about all the time is, you know, in serve receive, the the setter runs the offense, but in transition, everyone else runs the offense. And so they've got to have a level of communication that's loud and clear, uh, and early enough that the setter knows what he's got available and what he can run. So that's that's. That's a pretty good description of the communication. Yeah, good answer. A lot of different variables. And as a reminder, if you want to ask the coach a question, either tune into the live show or send them in ahead of time using the hashtag AskJay. Jay, we're back to EIVA play. Two big matches this weekend. Best of luck. And Thank we'll you. see you next week. Thank you. We are. Mason.